Welcome back if you've been with me for a while. I appreciate so much your love, comments, and support. And welcome if this is your first time on my channel. My name is Delcy, and if you end up watching any of my videos or have watched my videos, you know that I love my goats. And I want to provide you with as much helpful information as possible to raise them in the most healthy way. So there is a lot of good information coming your way in this video, but before you leave from this video, I want you to know that there is an awesome playlist of goat videos that you really need to check out because it is top-notch information and you will be glad that you spent the time watching them. So we'll see you in those videos as well. Today we are going to get into a very heavy subject, a subject that is very important to know about and think about and decide what is the best for your goats. So as usual, I'm going to dive in and give you all the information about this subject so that you can make the most informed decision. So there is a lot of information here, but if you are interested in learning about all the details of this subject, keep watching. Today we are going to talk about the CDT vaccine for goats. Vaccines are a pretty sticky subject that can cause a lot of inflammatory opinions, right? And whether we are talking about our kids or our kids, goat kids that is, we need to make a decision that is well informed and then stand firm in that decision. In my first years of goat ownership, I, I didn't vaccinate my goats and then I did for a few years and through all of those years my goats were healthy and happy and usually goats can be healthy and happy with either decision. It is a good idea for all goat owners to take the time to understand what vaccinations are and if they are needed in every situation and why. Let's dive in and look at what the CDT or the CDNT vaccination for goats is all about. The three letters C, D, and T may not ring any bells. What is CDT? CDT is a vaccination for enterotoxemia and tetanus. Enterotoxemia is caused by two strains of bacteria called Clostridium perfringens, type C and D. It is also called overeating disease. This bacteria is present in small amounts in a goat, but when grain is increased, a protein supplement or a milk replacer is given or the goat is on new spring growth, the bacteria are given all the sugar, the starch, and the protein needed to exponentially grow, causing toxins to be released in harmful and deadly amounts. Tetanus is caused by a wound that becomes infected with the tetanus bacteria. Tetanus is found in rusty nails, but it lives everywhere. It lives in the soil. And the kids will be protected with tetanus immunity through the colostrum of the milk after the dough is vaccinated. But here's a tip for you. Record when you give the shot, if you decide to, to each goat in your goat health and information binder linked below. You can see all the information you need about a goat at a glance and never have to worry about when you gave a shot and when you should give one again. With that said, prevention is key. Prevention is more likely to be successful than trying to treat the disease. As a goat owner, you will decide to give the CDNT vaccine or not, but whichever decision is made, the following practices need to be observed. Practice safe feed management. Grains, silage or haylage, lush pasture, milk or milk replacer, and certain protein supplements and, and even complete feeds, pellets that are designed to be fed to induce grain in lambs or kids, all can trigger this disease if fed in excess. If you do feed what I just mentioned, feed your animals roughage, some hay first. They will fill up with the hay and have a lower chance of overstuffing themselves on the feeds that may trigger the disease. You may also want to split up the high risk feed into several smaller portions throughout the day. Keep all grain bins locked up securely. Don't underestimate a goat's ability to get into anything and always 
always make feed changes slowly. Do this by slowly increasing the amounts given over several days time. If you are feeding your goats high risk feed, watch your animals. If feeding several animals at once, watch for dominance as well. You don't want one animal pushing around the others and getting most of the feed. When turning your animals out to pasture, do this very slowly at the beginning. So like on day one, you'll put them out for 10 minutes. Day two, put them out for 20 minutes. And each day, just increase the time the animal is allowed into the pasture. In about one week, the animal should do well on pasture for a 24-hour period. Possible causes of enterotoxemia. One cause may be finding your goat's head in a bag of grain after you know you locked the gate and checked twice. If goats or sheep are fed in grain in groups, one may push the others out and get more grain than planned or even realized. There may be a sudden change of being out on lush green pasture in the spring, or a young kid eating milk in excess from a heavy milking doe can cause this as well, or just any sudden change in feed. Here are some enterotoxemia symptoms you really need to watch for. There may be an animal going abruptly off feed and becoming very lethargic. Stomach pain or maybe kicking their belly. They may be laying down and, and getting up repeatedly. They may lay on their sides, panting and crying out, or diarrhea may develop and, and blood may even be visible in the loose stool. They may also lose their ability to stand and lay on their side, just extending their legs. Because of the effect of the toxins on the brain, the animal will extend their head and neck over their withers. When this sign is seen, death will commonly occur in minutes to hours. So here's the treatment for enterotoxemia. You really probably want to contact your vet. Your vet may treat a mild case with some analgesics, probiotics, or oral electrolyte solutions, or antisera, which is a solution of concentrated antibiotic, antibodies that neutralize the toxin the bacteria produces. Your vet may treat a severe case with intravenous fluids, antibiotic therapy, and possibly supplemental oxygen. This is some information taken from the Tennessee Meat Goats site. Antitoxin vaccines are used in medical emergencies when immediate but short-term protection is required. Goat producers use two antitoxin yeah. injectables, the C and D antitoxin and tetanus antitoxin. C and D antitoxin should be used whenever overeating disease or ruminal acidosis or any rumen-related toxicity is suspected to be the cause of the goat's illness. As with the vaccines, the antitoxins are used subcutaneously, meaning they put it under the skin. The C and D antitoxin is very safe to use and has a wide margin of error. It is one of the few medications which can be used without fear of hurting the animal. Tetanus is another disease no one wants to deal with in animals. The bacterium Clostridium tetani is deadly. As I'm going to talk about, this nasty bacteria is not one you want to mess with. A goat can get tetanus through several things. The soil, the feces, horse manure is a perfect place for tetanus to thrive. A cut on a fence or a sharp object by just, you know, the goat playing around can also be the culprit. Trimming a goat's hooves and drawing blood allows an opening for the bacteria to enter and wreak havoc. Puncture wounds, disbudding, bites between goats and dog bites, castration and tattooing, dehorning, even kidding difficulties. The rubbing of a collar on a chained or tethered goat can produce skin lesions as well. The elastrator bands used for castrating young males can cause this. Deep puncture wounds are the biggest concern because the bacteria is sensitive to oxygen. Tetanus flourishes in areas where oxygen is not plentiful, so like anaerobic conditions. Prevention is key with tetanus as well. If you are vaccinating, you will want to put this annual vaccination on your calendar so it's not forgotten. And if you choose to not vaccinate, 
keep the tetanus antitoxin on hand. It instantly reverses the tetanus disease if given immediately. And keep all areas clean of, of rusty sharp objects and areas that could cut a goat because this bacteria will enter your goat through an opening in their skin or body. Keep the area where the goats are living clean and sanitary. So here are some tetanus symptoms to watch for. They may have a rigid gait, steady, unsteady, they may have mild bloat, anxiety, or they may be even unable to open their mouth, which is locked jaw. There's muscle stiffness, stiffness, drooping eyelids, changed voice, erect ears and tail, and the inability to eat or drink. Excessive salivation, constipation, seizures, rigid extension of the legs. The signs often get progressively worse and convulsions may occur. Death occurs from asphyxiation, secondary to respiratory paralysis. After the goat lays down and, and can't get back up, death usually occurs quickly, usually within 36 hours or less. Here is the treatment for tetanus. You will want to contact your vet immediately. You'll be giving high doses of penicillin, anti-inflammatories, and tetanus antitoxin. Before finding or doing anything with the initial site of injury, the tetanus antitoxin must be given. It should even be given before cleaning the wound to reduce the chance of the toxin becoming absorbed further while manipulating that damaged tissue. Excessive tissue manipulation may make the animal dramatically worse. So open the wound or infection site to the air. Remember, this bacteria is sensitive to oxygen and infiltrate with penicillin. If you do decide to give the CD&T shot to your goat, where do you give a goat or, or a sheep even a CD&T shot? This vaccine is given subcutaneously, which, which is also sub-Q, or you'll see it S-Q. Subcutaneous means under the skin and implies just under the skin. With a subcutaneous injection, a needle is inserted just under the skin. You'll want to prepare the vaccine with the proper dosage and a 20 gauge needle. You'll lift the skin in the armpit of the goat into a tent. You'll insert the needle under the skin into the tent towards the body. So you want to make sure that that needle isn't in the skin, just in the skin, or, or the muscle, or even just through that other side of the tent. And then you'll inject the medication and, and remove the needle. And you'll want to rub the initial, that injection site for about 30 seconds to prevent any lumps or bumps. So here's some more important information about the CDT vaccination and what ages to give CDT to goats. You want to follow the label directions carefully. Some companies sell a combination vaccine, the CDT, and a protection against additional clostridial diseases. But contact your vet first to see if those diseases are common in your area before you spend any extra money. What is a clostridial disease? The clostridial diseases are a group of mostly fatal infections caused by bacteria belonging to the group called clostridia. These organisms have the ability to form protective shell-like forms called spores when exposed to adverse conditions. You want to vaccinate does about 30 days prior to kidding. This will provide protection to the kids through the colostrum. But if the doe has not been given a priming booster, the pre-kidding annual shot probably won't be effective. What is a priming booster? It is two shots administered three to four weeks apart. It usually is given when a doe is young, but can be given at any point in her life. You'll want to vaccinate kids at five to six weeks of age. Give the priming booster three to four weeks later. If your doe was vaccinated properly, giving the CDT shot before a kid is five weeks old may result in the kids not being protected and therefore the annual boosters may not be effective. If you are uncertain of the vaccination history of a doe or if colostrum intake of a kid is uncertain within the first 24 hours of birth, vaccinate the kid at 7 to 21 days of age and then give that booster three to four weeks later. 
Any other adult goats, yearling, or breeding bucks can be given the annual burst boosters 30 days prior to the breeding season or when the herd is receiving their booster vaccines. Give any new breeding bucks and does with just unknown vaccination history two initial doses three to six weeks apart and then put them on just the annual vaccination schedule. Some research has shown that goats might benefit from booster vaccinations twice a year, six months apart. So here are some other alternatives to the CDT vaccine for goats. Remember, you don't have to vaccinate. If you choose not to give this vaccine, follow carefully and practice the safe feed management guidelines and the steps to prevent tetanus, everything I've already mentioned. I don't know about you, but nothing about these diseases sound pleasant. If you do choose to vaccinate, mark your calendar each year and give your goats the CDT vaccine and then write this information in your goat binder. Remember the link is below. Have you ever had any experiences with a goat getting enterotoxemia or tetanus? If you have, well, let me know in the comments below. I'd also like to mention that I'm not a doctor or a veterinarian, so this information that I have given in this video is just my opinion only and is not meant to replace professional, veterinary, or medical opinion. So any products mentioned, anything that I've said are not intended to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure anything. So I just want you to know that and, and always do your research before you do anything and I will provide a link below so that you can read this information as well because sometimes I know for me I like to read things and that's when I really get it in me uh, so definitely check out that link below.